Lord Henry Darnley was universally loathed in Scotland. He was arrogant, lazy, narcissistic, vindictive, privileged, an alcoholic, sexual deviant who rose to prominence thanks to his place in the English aristocracy. He was a Tory, basically. But when Darnley first arrived to the scene, he was actually well-liked and popular. It took a while for his true nature to reveal itself and for everyone to see how much of a massive prick he really was. He was kind of like Nick Clegg, I suppose. And Darnley and Mary, they were cousins. Both had Margaret Tudor, Henry VIII's sister, as a grandmother. And Darnley's claim to the English throne was next in line after Mary's. Many in England actually preferred Darnley's claim since he was male and he was an English subject. It didn't matter that he was totally unsuited to be a political leader. At least he wasn't a woman. Because English politics in the 16th century was very similar to American politics in the 21st century in that respect. And like most great true love cousin stories, theirs begins in Fife. Uh, the two first met in the tiny wee coastal village of Weems. And on seeing Darnley for the first time, Mary, she commented that he was the lustiest, most well-proportioned lang man in Scotland, which is actually what I have in my Tinder bio. Mary, she showered Darnley with land, money and titles like he was a Tory party donor. He went from Lord Darnley to Earl of Ross to Duke of Albany. A spectacular rise to prominence even greater than Ryland going from X Factor editions to presenting the one show. Heralds declared at the Mercat Cross in Edinburgh that Darnley and Mary were to be married and that Darnley was to be made King of Scotland. Now Mary had no, not consulted the Parliament about this or waited for papal approval from the Pope to marry your cousin. You had to get permission from the Pope if you wanted to marry your cousin. That's what the white smoke is all about. All the folk waiting outside of the Vatican, they're just horny cousins desperate to shag each other. And so Mary and Darnley, they were married at Holyrood Palace in July 1565. And what followed was three days of constant balls, banquets and partying. The place was like 10 Downing Street during a lockdown.